Hello students, how are you? Hope you are doing well with your studies. I am Umesh Gaikwad, Department of Information Technology, KK or Institute of Engineering Education Research Asi. Today we will see next part of Ubiquitous Computing, Unit Number Four. Our today's topic is Human Centered Design. Before starting this topic, we will see points. and objectives associated with this topic we are having three main objectives first objective is to understand detailing of life cycle of human centered design various stages are there in life cycle of human centered design second one is we should be able to compare human centered design with conventional system design and last objective is to understand various methods to acquire user input and to build use model first of all we will check what is the difference between human centered design and conventional system design in conventional system design more focus is on what kind of services or what kind of action are necessary to perform or to provide services to the user in application we know that if you want to provide a particular functionality to the user then we have to build various services and functions in conventional design more focus is on the services and functions and very less focus is on user entry of user is only in the first stage and in the last stage in between there is no role of user but in human centered design during every phase there is role of a user according to the human centered design user is the center of focus for development of any application so it is necessary that during every stage we have to consult with the user and for building any item or any functionality main focus should be on the user now we will see next part that is human centered design life cycle in this diagram you can see both life cycles first life cycle is conventional system design life cycle and second one is human centered life cycle in conventional system life cycle you can see at the first stage we will get input from the user but after that there is no role of user we will perform design of a product then we will implement the product and we will finally validate the product and we will launch the product after that after launching a product we will deliver that product to the user so very less importance is to the user but in human centered design more focus is on user and his requirement first of all with the help of user we will understand what kind of context is there where this application will get delivered after that we will identify various stakeholders associated with the application we will consult with them with the various techniques and we will collect data from them we will design a solution again we will consult with the user and we will validate whether requirements and the solution which we have uh, which we have formed is correct or not if user is satisfied with some of the item then we will build those item as a part of a system for remaining one again we will take suggestions from the user and this will be in the loop till the end of the project now there are four main activities present in the human centered design first of all we have to design or define a context where this application is useful after that we will discuss with the user we will gather the data after getting a data we will discuss what kind of user interface is suitable to satisfy the requirement of the user single solution is not fruitful we have to identify many alternatives and after that we will put all the alternatives in front of user so that user can select appropriate one with the help of user we will validate correct solution and after that we will build the solution next part is methods to acquire users input 
and to build used products. Various methods are there to acquire users' input. Some of the popular methods are in-field studies, surveys, questionnaires, and usability testing. In in-field studies, we will uh, by using in-field study technique, we can gather the data. Same thing, thing is that we can conduct various surveys uh, and we can collect data from the user. We can also prepare a questionnaire. We can circulate that questionnaire among the user and we can collect the data. One more thing is that usability testing. By using this usability testing also, it is possible to collect data from the user. So moral of the story is that by using these three or there are these four uh, techniques, we can collect the data. After collecting the data, now it is time to evaluate what we want and what we have designed. Now, for evaluation purpose, various techniques are there and this is very important for a point, exam point of view. Few important techniques are there. The first important technique is direct interaction technique. As per the name, with this technique, we have to interact with the user directly. For that purpose, question is, how can we interact with the user? For that purpose, again, we can prepare a questionnaire, we can ask some questions to the user, and with their answer, we can conclude the data. Interview is the same kind of technique during which we will take direct interview from the user and we will analyze their opinion. Second technique is inspection. In this technique, instead of interacting with the user, we will call to the expert of the domain. Those experts of the domain will identify, will analyze our solution, will inspect the user interface which we have designed and they will give their opinion on the same. They will also give some remarks or modification necessary for the design. Cognitive walkthrough is the same kind of technique in which designer and expert evaluator work as individuals or group and walk through the sequence of tasks and document which will describe, describe user's response. In this technique also, we can collect the data and we can analyze and we can evaluate the things. The next technique is user's explicit observation. We will give our developed functionality to the user and we will observe how user is going to use that functionality. And with this observation, we will identify some points and depending on that points and data, we will perform the evaluation. And the last one is the predictive model. Depending on some scientific technique, we will predict whether our design and our solution is correct or not. These are some techniques for evaluation purpose. Now in next, we will see defining the virtual and physical environment use context. This diagram will describe how to define the virtual and physical environment to use the context. Here we can observe user's presence is present in all three environments, physical, virtual and human. In virtual environment, information of the, all those ICT tools, their connection, storage, display, it is present. In physical environment, it describes the conditions where those ICT tools will be present and we will also describe the context where we are going to use those ICT tools. Now next part is defining the human environment use context and requirement. For defining the human environment use context and their requirement, first of all, we have to put focus on user's characteristics and user's profile. User's characteristics describe the behavioral aspect of the user and user's profile describe the various privileges available with the user, what user can do and what user expect. Now, in next point of the user profile, it is also important to identify uh, what user what about the devices and services. What is the expectation of user about the devices and services? Whether user want remote access to the device or he want local access, whether user want individual access or user want to share the devices and services, whether user want to invoke service manually or service invocation should be the automatic, all these factors are important for user profile. One more thing is that 
in the user profile we have to also put more focus on what kind of context is there in the in user uh, walk to handle the service also the usability space uh, in which we are going to handle HTTP devices there are three types of usability space are present spaces are present personal social and public space also we for after the user profile formation usability evaluation must be there for any purpose interaction design is also one point through which we can define the context and the requirement now here we are having two types of model through which user can understand the service conceptual model and mental model conceptual model is the attraction of a system or a service at a level that is understandable by the user here the information of all mandatory and minimum services are present but the restriction over the conceptual model is it should be aligned with the mental model we can build conceptual model by associating or aligning our physical our real our virtual object with the, with the physical world object mental object mental model it is very easy to understand now we know that lot of and thousands of devices are present and user want to handle all those devices now it is very necessary to provide training to the user for each and every device but it is very time consuming and it is uh, it is little bit impossible to provide training of each and every aspect so what is the solution solution is very simple that is the mental model user will use some devices and with that experience the question is is it possible that user will use next device yes if user is using n number of if user have used n number of devices in the past then user can use that experience to handle n plus 1th device user can learn operating of new system by using previous experience user for that purpose we can also build a clue based system what is a clue based system for example we are having the same card uh, of a mobile uh, of a cell phone and by identifying the so by observing the size of a slot we can easily identify that yes we have to remove this sim card in this slot similarly in, in our camera uh, if ring shaped button a ring shaped object is there for zoom and uh, in zoom and in the out purpose by using experience of other devices we can use the same object so this is a mental model and it is totally based on experience of the user If user haven't used any device in the past, then this mental model is not useful. Evaluation. This is the last step. We have to evaluate everything. In this part, we will see for evaluation what is necessary and what is mandatory. Evaluation need to be planned. We can start. We cannot start evaluation directly, but we have to start it by with the suitable planning. After that. it is it is important to select various users for evaluation purpose we will take input from the user but it is necessary that we have to collect data from users who belongs to various categories so methods for acquiring user input it should be based on the same method which we have used for gathering data from the user some summative evaluation techniques also there through which we can map or we can measure safety and physical environment requirement evaluation is very important to check whatever we have designed that design is correct or not whatever solution we have proposed it is as per the user's requirement is not whatever user interface we have designed is, is it compatible for the user or not is it aligned to the mental model or not is it aligned to the conceptual model or not so this is all about the human centered design so in human centered design we have studied what is a human centered design and how it is different as compared to conventional design we have also studied human centered design life cycle in which we have studied there is more focus is on the user as compared to functions and the services after that we have studied various techniques to gather the input and various techniques for the evaluation purpose then we have studied how to define context and requirement in various scenarios after that we have studied two types of model 
through which user can understand working of the device. The models are conceptual models and mental models. So this is the end of topic human centered design. In case of any query you can contact me. So please watch this video carefully. Thank you.